Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Women Engineering panel discussion. My name is Chao Sun. I am a professor of mechanical engineering. I'm also a senior associate dean of diversity equity at the Schulich School of Engineering. I will be acting as the moderator of today's panel session. Now, before I introduce our panelists, I would like to take a moment to talk about why. Why women in engineering? Now, you might know uh, engineering is still a field that is largely male-dominated. And in Canada, of all the registered professional engineers, only 12% are female. At the Schulich School of Engineering, we are trying to change the face of engineering. And we have made a lot of progress. And if you come to our classroom, you'll find 25% of our classes are taken by female students. Now, why is that important? It is important because we're trying to educate and train engineers of tomorrow. The world today is facing unprecedented challenges. Climate change, food security, um, sustainability, uh, cybersecurity, healthcare, the list goes on and on. So we need engineers who work in teams to solve these tough problems. Now, if half of the population is not even represented on these teams, we're not forming the best team to solve the toughest challenge of the world. So this is why at the Schulich School of Engineering, we welcome students from all walks of life to come to study with us, and we will do everything we can to support your success. So here we are, we have four uh, current engineering students with us, and we're hoping to talk about what it's like to be a student at the Schulich School of Engineering. And uh, let me introduce our panelists. To my left is Monique Sullivan. Um, Monique is currently studying uh, under uh, Masters of uh, Science, Masters uh, of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Monique is two-time Olympian uh, who graduated about four years ago from our undergraduate program from Mechanical Engineering. Then next to Monique is Raven Moore. Raven is a civil engineering student who has completed three years in our undergraduate program and now doing internship. Um, then next to uh, Raven is Kira Fulton. Kira is with Geomatics Engineering. Um, Kira came to us trans by transferring from another university. Uh, next to Kira is Maria Backlick. Maria is our first year student uh, who has just completed the first year program heading into electrical engineering with computer science minor. Welcome, wonderful panelists. Uh, what we'll do right now is as we continue to receive questions from the audience, we will start some questions. Um, so maybe I'll start with Maria. Um, what drew you to engineering and Schulich in particular? Okay. Hello? Is we're good? Okay. Um, thanks for starting with me, Dr. Sun. <laughs> uh, what drew me to engineering? I think. I didn't know I wanted to go into engineering until um, grade 12. And what really drew me to engineering was that the being creative in a practical scope. So engineering, you have to be creative, but you have to be creative in a way that's applicable in real life. And I think the reason why I wanted to go into engineering rather than science was that my curiosity did not go beyond how will this make my life better? And I guess that's in a way uh, selfish, but it's also like the priorities in my head are to make quality of life better. And in engineering, I think that's the the biggest priority is how will 
how will our discoveries, how will what we're working on make quality of life for others and ourselves better? Um, also, what drew me to Schulich was that it's one of the top 10 engineering schools in, Edmund in Canada. Um, and for me and for my parents, we love numbers. So being in the top 10 in Canada um, and being, it, being in, I'm from Edmonton and Calgary was in my province and I was like, Schulich School of Engineering is a very reputable and very um, one of the top 10 engineering schools in Canada. Thank you, Maria. Any, anyone else would like to add to that question? Okay. One of the things that drew me to Schulich was the flexibility with extracurriculars. So the engineering curriculum typically is, um, there's a lot there, and, and at, no matter what engineering school you go to, there's a mandated curriculum, but Schulich goes the extra mile to support your extracurriculars, whether it's clubs and teams. For myself, it was my sport, and so I was able to combine um, my passions, which were engineering and cycling, to create this really unique degree and this really unique experience, and I think that's what sets me apart now as an engineer, so I'm really glad that that's a priority here, is to promote those individual differences between students. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else to add? No? Okay, let's go to our next question. Uh, for the audience, uh, if you could use the hashtag, it's shown here. We will continue to receive your questions and we will get to uh, answer your questions. So my next question was, uh, what, was like, what was your experience like when you first started here? Maybe I'll start with Kira. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so like Dr. Sun mentioned, I'm a transfer student, so I didn't actually start my experience at Schulich when I was in my first year. I actually transferred to the Schulich School of Engineering specifically for the geomatics engineering program. It's uh, one of four accredited geomatics engineering programs in Canada, um, and it was one of like the first two. So um, already it's a world-renowned program just for geomatics, and I learned about it when I was in high school. I, um, I came to the Women in Engineering Day here at U of C, and that's where I learned about geomatics, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. The applications are applicable to almost every industry. Um, and to be completely honest, I was like, you know what, this information is kind of badass. Like, <laughs> I totally want to do that. So I moved away because I'm from here and um, I still wanted to learn how to live away from home. Um, but, but while I was away, I still had geomatics in the back of my mind. So I moved back. I still lived on campus, so it was kind of like living away from home still. Um, so I, I started up uh, right in second year. and. Um, it was, it was a great experience. Um, my classes were really small uh, because I'm in geomatics. It's not necessarily typical of every department, but you still have a lot of common classes with everyone else, so it was a really great opportunity to get to know people from not only my department, but every other department. Um, and you foster those relationships for the rest of your uh, university career. I've still talked to plenty of the people that I was in my second year classes with. And um, it's really, really great even now after I've taken my technical electives and I'm almost graduating uh, to be able to bounce ideas off each other and um, be able to talk to each other about where we're planning on working after graduation because um, one thing I find special about Schulich is that they really foster um, interdepartmental uh, collaboration. And so I find it's really good to be collaborative with the other disciplines so that um, you have those connections, and, and that's how it is in the real world as well. You have to be able to work with engineers that aren't just from your discipline. So I find that's a really, really good thing that's fostered here at Schulich. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else to add, other panelists? Um, so I'm in my first year, and I'm, I'm from Edmonton, so my experience when I first started, I was definitely expecting a transition, and um, here at, at Schulich, the tight-knit community here really helped with that transition. So what surprised me a lot was that profs and classmates, and I guess because engineering is very hard at the beginning, the transition from high school to um, university with a workload and everything, um, people really like to collaborate because everything's so difficult, you really have to work together. And I really in liked how the profs were always like, if you need help, and the big thing is there's, there's always help here at, at Schulich. You just have to be the one to, to ask for it and to go to office hours and to go to um, tutoring sessions. Here at the uh, UFC, we have 
a program called Engineering Academic Success Center, and it's where you can go. It's a uh, eight-hour tutoring place where students can just drop in and ask for questions for courses and stuff like that. So uh, it was a very positive experience coming in. I was a little bit worried, especially with the transition and being have to having to take care of myself as well as uh, live on my own. But um, the profs and the community here really made it much easier. Great. Anything else from other? No? OK. Let's go to our next one. Um, what was your most memorable moments in engineering? Maybe I'll start with Raven. OK. So my most memorable, I think hopefully, will be my fourth year, so next year. So I'm really looking forward to it, and I have high hopes. Um, but I think the year that I'm proudest of is definitely my third year. Um, in the summer, I went through a really hard experience with Eng um, in my first job, and it made me really question if Eng was for me. And I decided I was going to push through it and come back into third year and just really give it my all and still accomplish everything I wanted. I have a bucket list of things in Eng that I really want to do. And I was like, no, I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to get all of them done still. And so I did, and I was able to keep up my marks. And I was president of Women in Science and Engineering, along with Maddie Fail. And I had just come back from a study abroad experience, so that was really inspiring to come back and, and do my third year here. And it was fun to be a part of all the teams, and I got involved with the civil community. And so I still felt that sense of community, and it really reassured me that Eng was the place for me. And so making it through that year, it proved to me that I do belong here, and I deserve to be here, and I've worked really hard for it. And that was my, that's my proudest year, for sure. Awesome. Other panelists? Yeah, I would love to share my most memorable experience, because I'm still really proud of it. Um, it only happened just a few months ago. Um, so this year, um, our student body hosted the second annual G National Geomatics Competition, uh, the second one ever, uh, hosted here at U of C. And um, we had started planning this last May. So um, as the president of the Geomatics Engineering Student Society, I was working alongside with the organizing committee of the NGC um, for like eight months planning this four-day conference. Um, and then on top of that, I was only um, helping with logistics, so I also decided to compete because I had nothing to do with the actual case competition. So I entered with a team of some of my classmates, um, and one of my, one of my closest friends uh, from school here, Edmund, he was the chair of the NGC. It was his honor to be uh, announcing the awards of the competition. And uh, right before he announced first place, he, he kind of made a microsecond of eye contact with me <laughs> um, and then announced my team. So it was really proud to see my fellow students supporting me right before I, I won this, this national competition. Um, and I got a lot of uh, attention from my professors, from my colleagues, from industry, um, industry partners. Um, and I'm also really, really proud of the fact that um, my, my team, the, the winning team, was an all-female team, and we were representing Schulich and women in engineering to students and in industry from all across North America. It was a really, really proud moment of mine. Congratulations. Wow. Thank that, you. That's really um, awesome. Uh, any, anything else to add? I have something to add, actually, to what Maria said earlier. Um, going back to what surprised me about engineering, and I think what surprised me the most was that humanitarian aspect. So I came into engineering, I knew that it, it had to do with building things and problem solving, which is what brought me to it. Um, at first, I, I was really interested in prosthetics, but when I came here, I really realized that engineering is about solving problems, using math and science to solve humanitarian problems, mm -hmm. and that to me has become a really exciting part of it, and I think that um, going back to saying how you were chatting about first year being challenging, and I, I think what's unique about it is that, you know, we're training engineers to solve these big problems you mentioned before, to solve climate change and, and to find solutions to these really big problems, and so when we say that first year engineering is challenging or engineering is really hard, it's because we're training you to solve these really big problems, and we're scaffolding that, and so in first year, some of your courses are similar to high school, but then in some of them, we say, OK, let's apply this knowledge in a new way. Let's make this like, a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And then in second year, and as you go through your degree, 
the problems become more complicated, they become more ill-defined, there's not just one solution path to get to the right answer. And so as you go through your degree, you build up this ability to solve harder and harder problems. And that is the beauty of an engineering degree. And so when we say it's hard, um, it is, but that's actually the beauty of it because engineers want to graduate to solve these hard problems. And one of the unique things about Schulich is that we really prioritize that student support. And so that's why we have the resource center. So we don't make it easier, but we provide that support so that you can solve the hard problems. And I think that that's, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. That's very well said. And Monique, you're also doing research as a master's of science student on how to teach, right? The teaching methodology so that, you know, we, we, can, we, can, we can be more effective in our education. Uh, that's, that's a really interesting point. So I wanted to know of other panelists, uh, do you have some surprises when you, after you come to engineering, uh, you know, come to Schulich, uh, any surprises? Like Monique says, something surprised her, right? like your understanding of engineering or something else. Anything surprise you? Yeah, so I think one thing that surprised me, and it's kind of going back to what Monique also just said about how it's training you how to think. Um, so in my first year, I helped design a healthcare clinic in Kenya, which was part of an extracurricular um, curricular, like an extracurricular team. And what surprised me was that I think a lot of like engineering in our world right now is focused on like the technology and the advances, but it can also go back to really basic things like designing buildings. And I was really surprised by how I could take what I had learned, which a lot was it was like theory, and apply it to this really real life situation. And because they had taught me how to think, we designed this building for earthquakes in Haiti two years ago. And I've never dealt with earthquakes before, but you're able to take the process of how to think and how to solve this problem and then apply it and actually come up with like a solution. And then you can implement that. So my team is going down in less than a month to go build this building. And it's wonderful. And I'm really surprised at myself and at my team and that we were able to do this. But it's because we have this, this way of thinking that they've, they've helped us learn. You learn how to think in a specific way to solve problems and then you can apply it and you can do anything when you can do that. Awesome, wonderful. Anything else to add? No? Okay, so let's move on to our next question. So given what you know now, what would you do differently? Monique? For me, I actually wouldn't do, I, I can honestly say I wouldn't do anything differently. I, um, I extended my degree, so it took me a bit longer to graduate so I could focus on my competing. Something I wasn't able to do was join more of those clubs and teams, and I really wish I had been three people and could have done that because the opportunities are just awesome, and that's a great story that both of you just shared about that club experience that you had. Um, I wish I had a little bit more capacity to do that, um, but I can't say, I can't honestly say that I would change it. Okay. Anything else to add? Other. So with the clubs and teams, I think one thing that I have learned over my years is that the things that Kiera might be interested in are completely different from the things that I'm interested in. And not to compare our successes and um, what we're doing because we have different interests. And that's something I really struggled with in my first year because I was surrounded by all these really high achieving people and they're doing amazing things like what Kier has done and what, what Maria and, and Monique have done are all amazing. And so trying not to compare myself because that's only gonna hinder my own proce um, progress and trying to focus on I'm doing what I want and it's important to me and that's good enough and that's all the reason that you need to be doing something. And so I think that's, I just wish I had learned that a little quicker in my first year and just been a little easier on myself. Cool. Yeah, speaking of things I wish I learned earlier, I. Um, I, to be completely honest, going into engineering, I, I was like, you know what, this is going to be really hard. I just need to focus on my studies or else I'm going to fail. So I never really worried about getting involved into extracurriculars or anything. Um, and I just sort of fell into joining um, the Engineering Student Society when I was in my second year. Um, and, or actually, no, it was in my third year. Um, and I really, really wish I had 
done that sooner because I made so many friends, I made so many connections, and it really opened up my confidence to, to join more things at um, the Schulich mm -hmm. School of Engineering. Um, there's so much that's fostered into um, going to conferences or traveling abroad, and I didn't really gain that confidence until a lot later in my uh, university career, and I would say that this final year has been where I really truly encompass as much as I could from Schulich, and I, I wish I had taken those opportunities earlier. Yeah, uh, touching on what Kira and Raven said, yeah, um, like I wish in my first in my first couple months that I really prioritized my time. I would recommend like focusing on uh, two areas where you'd like to, because there's so many opportunities here at Schulich. Um, there's like workshops every day, every Monday you get bombarded by emails, you know, like this event's going on, this conferences are going on and everything. And um, y you can go to so many free lunch, pizza lunches that you don't have to even worry about lunchtime <laughs> in the beginning of the year. But um, I wish I would focus on a couple of areas like um, the clubs that I joined this year was Solar Car and Engineers Without Borders. And I wish early on in the year that I had focused my time more on those clubs rather than um, uh, like going to all these clubs. And I guess it's also good to to go out and see which clubs you'd like and which where you'd like to spend your time on. But uh, in engineering, your time is very valuable. So being able to prioritize and time manage all um, the things you want to do so you can do it well and do it your way. Okay, good. I'm just uh, looking at our messages. We've already received a lot of questions, so I think I'm gonna, you know, read out uh, some of those questions, and we'll continue our conversation. So, first question is for Raven. Uh, can you explain the badges on your scarf? <laughs> yes. So you get this beautiful scarf in your first year during O Week. The dean will give it to you. It's beautiful, it makes you feel like you're from Hogwarts. And you get these patches by participating in things, and it's a big deal, like they're super cool. No one else, where are you guys' patches? <laughs> I kept forgetting to take mine. <laughs> okay, they're kind of a pain to sew on, so I just super glued them. But you get them for participating, so if you go to a conference, everyone like trades patches, it's super cool. If you're like in different clubs, they have patches. Eng week, you always get patches for like the movies and things like that. So it's like by participating, and it shows that you're an active, actively like in the community. And then on the back, I have patches from everywhere I um, went on my study abroad. So I studied in Spain with the um, I, uh, Spain through the eyes of an engineer program which was really cool because the course is counted towards my degree. And then I also got to travel and, and enjoy Europe. And then, yeah, I got patches along the way just to remind me that that was, that was part of my Schulich experience. So it's kind of a nice souvenir at the end of the day to take home and be like, these are all the things that I was involved in. Yeah, I have one on here. I have some from WISE, which is Women in Science and Engineering. I have some from like Civil because I'm in Civil. There's like some like conference ones on here. So they're really fun. You should uh, add patches to your scarves when you get them. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay, next question is for Monique. Uh, how did you juggle school and go into your Olympics? So it was not easy. Um, so uh, at the highest level, they complemented each other really nicely because um, I was really passionate about both and I was able to satisfy both sides of myself at the same time. I think one of the things that you have to recognize is that I really prioritized those two things. I, I trained and I went to school and I, and I sacrificed other things in order to do that and that was a deliberate choice that I made. Um, and it's not something that I regret at all. But if you want to do something at the highest level, sometimes that means you have to say no to other things. And so I became an expert at saying no to the things that didn't directly contribute to those two priorities and so I think that's something that's really important to consider um, when you are setting these really big goals it's okay to say no to other things and now that I'm not competing anymore I have time to do some of those other and satisfy those other parts of myself um, that I set aside while I was uh, in school and so at the time I thought of it as we all try to have balance and we kind of try to have balance all at the same time um, but you can, if you think in a longer time scale, you can also create balance that way. So I've had times now where I've had more free time or more time with my friends now that, I, that I'm not training for the Olympics. From a more practical standpoint, um, 
managing your time and taking really good care of yourself is important. Um, it's really easy. It's um, Sometimes you think, oh, I have to study for six hours straight, but you can also study for two hours, leave for two hours, and come back for two hours, and potentially get the same amount of stuff done. So just being really diligent and honest with yourself, am I using my time wisely? Mm -hmm. um, and also being a little bit compassionate with yourself. Nowadays, I think um, there's even more pressure to be the very best at everything all the time, and, and I appreciated your comment before is, um, it's okay not to be the best at everything, and um, it's okay also to not be quite sure what you want to do. So be kind with yourself if you're not sure what that goal is. If the goal is really specific, um, be kind with yourself as you go through the, the process of getting towards that goal. Great, great. That's awesome. Um, the next question is probably for all of you. What is the biggest difference between high school and university? Anyone wants to start? The biggest one for me was just workload. I wouldn't even necessarily say that the classes were that much harder. It's just you're taking so many classes and they all have deadlines and quizzes and exams and it's just trying to balance all of that on top of each other. Once you figure out time management, I think your life gets a lot easier and you don't really have that need for time management in high school. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, difference between high school and university was probably freedom. Uh, freedom with your time. Um, you don't have to go to your lectures, you don't have to go to anything, but I would recommend you do, to do, please. Um, and, in, and in university, the teachers aren't there being like, you have to finish this and that, and they aren't badgering you. You have to, you have to guide your own ship, you, you are, you, you plan your own time and you do what you have to do. So um, I think that's the biggest difference that you really decide what to do with your time and how you spend it, yeah. I think one big difference is that in high school, everyone's kind of on the same path. Like you go through all your courses and you graduate. In university, there's a lot more flexibility to, to make it your own. So you can choose what clubs and teams you participate in. You can choose um, which degrees, like path you wanna go in, if you wanna take minors, if you wanna specialize in anything. You can choose if you wanna study abroad. You can choose if you wanna do internship and where you do your internship. So you really get a lot of control over what you're coming out with. And I think you get as much out of your degree as you put into it. So the effort you put into extracurriculars or or pursuing your passions and like learning what those are and all that like self-discovery that you do, especially in your first year, it like you get it right back. So I think that's the, the biggest difference. I'm gonna answer the opposite. Something that's not different is that your instructors still are desperate to help you and they want you to come ask questions and they want to support you. Now that I'm on the other side of the fence and I'm teaching, I set my office hours and I sit there wishing students would come and they don't come to ask questions during office hours. And I just, as a student, I didn't, went, I, I didn't go, I was too shy. Or I did the classic, you ask one question and you still don't really understand, but you feel like you're supposed to understand, so you just nod and then, and then you leave. The teacher knows that you don't understand yet um, and they want you to ask the follow-up question. And if you can catch that early, if you can start to approach your instructors early, you'll catch those tiny things um, that you feel like you're supposed to know. Um, but if you don't know them, they can really hold you back later. So I would ask, I would get to know your instructors as soon as you can, ask for help because they are there to help you and they do really want to support you. If you don't like your instructor, you can reach out to your TAs as well. They're also there to help you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Okay, next question. Um, I guess people wanted to know what kind of engineering, what kind of career can engineers uh, take? So any thoughts, like your plan or I think there's some big categories, and if I'm missing one, just like jump in and say it. But you can go like technical, so that's like very like calculation based. It's a lot of like what you what you learned in school. You're like applying it directly. Um, you can do like more project management, uh, so like overseeing projects. It's a lot more like people related and like looking at the whole scope. Um, you can go the academic route where you become a professor or an associate dean or or something <laughs> like that. Uh, Marketing is also a big one, actually. Yeah. There's a huge uh, 
area for technical marketing, which I learned a lot about when I was on my internship. I found out that like 80% of the marketing team at the company I worked for was uh, engineering graduates. So that was really surprising for me. And so I reached out and had one of them become my mentor. And I learned a lot about uh, that side of engineering where you really get to use your technical skills as well as being creative and and trying to have a user point of view and so you get to talk to people a lot you get to use your degree and your your knowledge a lot but you also get to be really creative it's sort of sort of this awesome blend of doing everything I think that works well we have like an entrepreneurship program mm -hmm. too that um, mixes mixes both the engineering and that marketing mm -hmm. I would say and there's also you can also kind of go more into the like your own business, your own eng, eng firm. So kind of more of like the business side of engineering. There's also um, the Hunter Hub here at the University of Calgary where um, it's just like a startup incubator. So there's a lot of room to be working with um, business students or, or people from other um, faculties that aren't engineering and trying to help them foster their ideas or, or foster your own idea as well. Um, I find there's actually a lot of startups in Calgary that are looking for a huge variety of engineers. Um, so there's, there's lots of room for, for geomatics to be applied with mechanical engineers or electrical engineers software. And I think it's, it's very similar for a lot of other disciplines of engineering is being able to work with each other. And I think uh, startups really try to foster that from the beginning. I can talk a little bit specifically about civil because that's what I'm in. So um, you can work for the government side. Um, so like that would be working for like the city of Calgary or like regulatory bodies. Um, that's creating a lot of like guidelines and like approving designs and making sure that everything is, is following all the guidelines that we have. You could be a consultant. So I'm currently in consulting on my internship and it's a lot of um, working with the client and what the client wants and, and designing for them and then it's a lot of um, like market-based like designing for the consumer and things like that which is really I really like it because it's very very fast-paced and you always get new projects and you get really cool projects um, and then there's also kind of more like the field side so like going in and actually like overseeing construction and making sure that everything is like being designed according to like what was what was done by the technical engineer cool Another thing, when you consider a career in engineering, it's different than some of the other disciplines because, for example, if you go into chemistry, it's because you're interested in chemistry or biology. Um, maybe if you have an interest in healthcare or something. But in engineering, you're really developing a specific skill set. So I did mechanical engineering, so I, I got a specific skill set. And it can be applied in a wide variety of industries. So um, I could use that in a biomedical um, capacity. I can use it in the energy industry. I can use it. Um, in all of these different ways, that same skill set. And to me, that's really powerful. Um, actually, speaking of geomatics, I got a lab tour recently. And so if you think about a drone, um, uh, one of the labs here at the University of Calgary, they put heat sensors on these drones. And the applications that they've been able to use for the same piece of equipment are fascinating. So one of them is you can actually just fly them over a, f a field of crops, and you can check the health of that field just from the temperature of the plants. But you can use that same technology and figure out, you can fly it alongside a building and you can find out where the heat losses of that building are. And so there's these really, really powerful impacts of that same technology in these different industries. And that's another thing about engineering that's awesome is that it's industry neutral. You have this skill set. And sometimes you might design something and not even realize what the future impact of that technology will be. Just to add to that, um, Engineering is also a basic education. So if for anyone who wanted to become a doctor, medical doctor or lawyer, um, you know, you need a basic degree and engineering is one of the basic degrees like science. Okay, I've got another question. Um, what is the difference between internship and co-op? And why do you, uh, you know, what's the advantage, disadvantage of either one of them? Uh, so from my understanding, the difference between uh, internship and co-op is that co-op, you can kind of take four months here, four months there, or an eight month term to be working. Um, but in Schulich, uh, you're encouraged to do an internship where you must have at least 12 consecutive months. Um, and I find that a really good rule, especially for the nature of uh, engineering work in the industry, is that if you're working for a company for, say, four months, because I, I worked um, a four-month summer term after my first year, um, 
and I couldn't really get into learning a lot. Um, in a lot of industries, you have to go through like a month work. Uh, a month's worth of like safety and training anyway, and then you're only really working for three months, versus um, an internship where you're there for 12 to 16 months, you can really, really get deep into a project, learn a lot, get to know the people that you're working with. So I find uh, for engineering in particular, it is, is really important to be able to, to spend longer than four months at a company and really go deep into a project, because that's what engineering is, is being able to see see a project from start to finish and, and be able to apply your knowledge in, in every aspect of it. I can also speak to this since I'm currently on internship. This was one of the things that I looked at when I was um, deciding which university I wanted to come to was looking at their internship versus co-op programs. Um, one of the things I really appreciated about our program, Shulix program, is that um, so you do your internship after your third year, between your third and your fourth year. And because you do it that way, there's this regulatory body called a PEGA. So when like we graduate, we get registered as engineers in training with a PEGA. And they're responsible for our accreditation. Uh, you need four years of experience with them so you can become a professional engineer. And that's when you can stamp your drawings and you're responsible for your work. Um, if you do an internship after your third year for um, at least 12 months, you can get up to a year of credit for that for that time that you worked, so that knocks it down. So when I graduate now, I only have to do three years of work experience to get to that same level because my internship counts, which I really appreciated that I'm getting credit for all the work that I'm doing. And I think it's like Kira said, because you get to work so in depth on those projects. Like I have projects that are completely my own and I'm responsible for now because I've been working there for long enough that I, that I understand what I'm doing. And it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, and even if you end up getting an internship that you don't love, that's a really, really great, it's still an, an amazing opportunity. Any work experience is good experience. You get to build up your resume. You have something that you can call your own and, and have actual accomplishments to share with employers when you graduate. Um, and I've also found that it's really good for people, again, if they don't absolutely love what they did on their internship, they know exactly what not to look for when they're graduating so they don't start going into a career path that they didn't know that they didn't want. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good to try out, like if you don't like something, that's mm -hmm. good to learn for 12 months. You're not doing it for a lifetime, so might as well learn that now. And we have, um, when you're picking your internship, you actually get to pick your own. So you can select which internships you want to apply for. And so it's totally up to you what you apply for. You're not being forced to take an internship that you don't want. So we have, uh, here at Shulik, we have a career link where opportunities are posted. Companies um, send them to Shulik and they post for you. So you don't have to go out and do your own job hunting if you don't want to. And you can, you can look through the list. You can also, there's international opportunities on there too. Those are all good things. So you can kind of, you can tailor it to what you want to do. Good. I'll go to uh, next question. Are there any opportunities for research work as an undergraduate student? There's a lot of opportunities for research at the University of Calgary. And what's great about it is that there's research in so many fields. Mm -hmm. What I recommend, and there's, as an undergrad student, you can apply for funding. And so the funding actually comes from an external source and then um, once that funding is secured, then you can work for a professor. Sometimes you can find a professor who has funding for that as well. Um, but what I recommend is to do research in, in an area that you're interested in. Find out which professor at the university is in that area. And it's pretty much guaranteed you'll find a professor who has work related to that area. Look into their research and just send them an email and say, I'm really interested in I'm really interested in your work. This is what I know about it, and this is what I'd like to learn more about. And just reach out to them. Um, professors are quite busy, so they might not get back to you right away, but if you reach out to a few of them, someone will get back to you, and then you can learn about those research opportunities. Um, after first or second year, you may not be able to get funding for it, but you can still help out in the lab with that data analysis, and then th that can build up your resume. It's also really a good way to figure out what you're interested in and start to tailor your degree to to the industry that you want. So I always think your, your degree is industry neutral, and the things that you do on top of that start to set you down the path that you want. So let's say you're really interested in the medical field. You could take, um, the way that we have it here is we don't have biomed as it's a standalone degree. We do it as a specialization. Um, there's a few reasons for that, but one of the primary reasons is that we want you to graduate with a standardized, a natural, sorry, nationally accredited program. So you'll have chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, geomatics, um, and then the biomedical is, an, is on top of that. That means that 
as a mechanical, if I had the biomed specialization as a mechanical engineer, I could go to an employer and say, my skill set is mechanical, and I have this specialization in the biomedical field. And so the research opportunities are ways that you can start to get that tailored experience. And I think even one of your students works at the hospital, one of your graduate students mm -hmm. um, is doing medical-based um, engineering research right now. Awesome, thank you. I think we'll take a little bit of pause. Uh, if you're just joining in right now, uh, this is a women engineering panel session. Uh, we're trying to uh, connect with you and uh, through this panel discussion to talk about what it's like to be a student at the Schulich School of Engineering. If you have any questions, this is how you reach me and I'll read out your questions. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is on May 4th, uh, we have this event on campus called You at Calgary. Uh, what it is, is really an uh, opportunity for you to, uh, to experience. And uh, we will have, um, it offers interactive preview of what it's like to come here to join our campus this fall. And uh, this day will include welcome from uh, faculty, a chance to meet other students, uh, scavenger hunt, uh, exploration of campus, activities with your faculty. And uh, you can register on the website under future students. OK, now let's go back to our questions. Switch my screen. Uh, OK, one of the questions asks about, if I don't have mechanic experience, can I still join one of the clubs and teams like Solar Car? So anybody with that experience? Yeah, so going to first year, I really wanted to get involved with the Solar Car team. Um, and I like going into the team, so they have three teams in the Solar Car. The engineering, the business team, and the communications team, I mean, the logistics team. Um, and I really want to join the engineering team. And they have an electrical team, a mechanical team, and a software team. Um, but I knew nothing. I was going into it like, um, I can help you just do like the dirty stuff. Like, I'll, I'll clean like the, your wrenches and all that stuff. But, <laughs> um, but w coming into the solar car team, what, what you do, because if you don't know a lot, you you get mentored by um, one of the team leads. So I was mentored by Robert Dunn, and he's he's the head of the engineering team, and he just taught me like how to do one thing, which was um, making the batteries, and he just taught me how to do one thing, and I just did it for like half the year, and it's a good learning experience, just getting to know all the parts of the car, and like you're not gonna you're not gonna design uh, like the battery on your first year. I mean, unless you're, uh, you already know everything about <laughs> a solar car, but um, they really do mentor you in the, as you come into the club. And what how it works is first year, second year, you're kind of learning how the car works. And, and third year, fourth year, fifth year, that's when you start and lead the team. So a lot of the leaders are in their latter part of their degree, and they're the ones designing. They're the ones calling the shots on what to do in the car. And, and we're just kind of the worker bees that um, that help do help build the car, but that's also it ga you gain experience and you you learn how the cars work and how the solar panels work. So it's a good way to really get hands-on experience um, at school. Yeah. I would just like to say that don't worry if you don't have experience in something. Your first year is here for you to learn. Your whole degree is here for you to learn. And the clubs and teams are really low-risk environments to learn, so they're great opportunities to take advantage of. Um, then you have that experience. I always suggest that students do uh, soft skills, something like WISE or EWB, something where you can get those communication skills, those teamwork skills, and then do something more technical like solar car, GNCTR, you can do Schulich racing, we have a motorcycle team, things like that. So do a technical and do a soft skills. And then when you get to your interview for internship, let's say, um, and they ask you, do you have technical skills and do you have soft skills, you can refer to those examples. And it's not like you'll be in first year where you don't have those examples. So take your years to learn and don't be worried about not having the experience because you have four years to develop it. Just a note here, 
I realize our students love acronyms. So can you explain <laughs> what EWB Sorry. means? Sorry, EWB is Engineers of the border, Borders, and Maria is in that. Yeah, so Engineers Without Borders, um, it's a national organization. Uh, we're just a chapter here at UC, and what we focus on is addressing global issues such as poverty and clean water. So uh, one of our programs is uh, sending a junior fellow uh, over to a place in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, to work on um, a project there that they need help on. So, so, so we do stuff like that. And I'm gonna plug WISE because it's Women in Science and Engineering, and this is a Women in Engineering panel and I was present, I'm very proud of, of the club. So uh, WISE is dedicated for women in science and engineering. Um, we're minorities in these fields and it's really nice to have a community to fall back on. They provide academic support, they provide mentorship, there's funding resources, conferences. You should definitely look into it when you get here. Thank you, awesome. Do you have anything else to, to add? Really? No? Okay, that's fine. Another question. What was your favorite engineering class? I think we can go on and on. Everybody has different favorite, maybe. Go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. I really like, so in civil we take geotechnical classes, so it's working a lot with soils, and we have soil labs. So a lot of our labs are like really hands-on, so you get to do the experiments, and a lot of them are really applicable to what I do on internship, where you do similar testing, and so I really love geotech because it's literally like buckets of dirt that we get to like play with and like do the analysis of and write these geotechnical reports so that's my favorite um, I can I can say that I really like most of my technical electives uh, so those are the electives that you get to take in your last year of studies um, if you kind of plan out your degree right you can start taking them earlier if you want so I actually chose to to take one while I was on internship and already that was applicable to the work I was doing. Um, for me, in my uh, degree, I found that my, my classes get more and more specific as I go. So these technical electives have been the opportunity to really tie together everything I've learned in the fundamentals of engineering in first, second, third year. And this is where I'm really getting to learn the cool and interesting aspects of geomatics engineering and, and engineering in general and which um, applications we can put it towards and, and starting to understand the innovations that we can really get out of engineering. Um, for me, my degree has only gotten better every year. <laughs> it just gets more and more interesting. Yeah, um, I think my favorite engineering class was Eng233. I don't know if you guys remember. It was my it was my first programming class ever, um, and I really really enjoyed it. It was um, it you had to be it was it was so you we code on Java, uh, and you just it would just open my mind to what you could do on processing, and I really like my prof, uh, Dr. Mashir Poor. He really inspired me. Um, that me and my friend we actually we actually made a program that. Um, could find all the sales in Superstore, uh, spurred on by our student budget, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it was really inspiring to see like what you could do with with programming, and you just spend time on your computer. You don't need to buy technology or whatever, and you could. There's so much power at your fingertips, and that's what I really like: just the freedom and the creativity in that class. Yeah. And my favorite. Um, classes were mechatronics and control systems. In engineering, um, we use math as sort of the language to make models. So we model the physical world with math so that we can um, test it out, s um, see what's going to happen, make observations, and ultimately build our designs. And I felt in those two classes, it was the first time that we had to, s to really think about the assumptions that we were making, like does this model really represent the real world? How is this gonna work with different inputs? So, so a, an example would be like the cruise control in your car. It has to work no matter what the weather is. It has to work if you're going uphill or downhill. It, it just has to work no matter how many people are in the car. And so trying to figure out to make a model to capture that, uh, it felt really tangible and real world and, and I really loved that. Cool, okay. so. We have some qu question regarding uh, whether to live on campus or off campus, I guess. So the question is, uh, what would you recommend to all the panelists uh, to stay at home 
for a Calgary student, I suppose, or live on campus? Um, I can speak to that because uh, when I when I came back to Calgary, um, uh, like one of the reasons I, I left uh, Calgary in the first place is because I wanted to learn how to live on my own. And I, I do really value the experience I had of learning how to buy groceries and clean up after myself and just making sure I have that kind of life experience. Uh, so when I came back to Calgary, I was like, nope, mom and dad, I am not moving back in with you. I am going to live on campus. Um, and if if you can financially handle it, I, I would recommend it. Um, if not for learning how to live on your own, just being so close to your classes. Um, I found myself really, really busy in my first few years of school, and I'm still really busy. Um, and even just avoiding an hour train ride was really valuable for me. I can just walk home in five minutes and get working or whatever. Um, I, f I found living on campus to be really helpful. But that's not to say it's bad to live off campus either. I think it's totally up to you and your priorities, um, and you need to make the decision for yourself. So uh, I lived on campus for my first two years uh, just because the drive from where I'm from would not have been feasible, and I wish that it was because the money I would have saved would have been really nice, but I don't regret living on campus. So in your first year, if you're applying for campus um, for like residence, uh, you can pick. So there's like an engineering specific floor, and that's a fantastic floor. I didn't live on it. I lived on um, a scholarship floor specifically, but it was very similar because most of the kids on there were in engineering. And so the experiences I think we had on both floors were very similar. You kind of have this community that's like, everyone is in the same boat as you. Everyone is studying for midterms at the same time as you. Everyone is going through the same thing and you can all help each other study. And that was really nice. It's nice to, to feel that community and have people that you can talk to and have questions um, you can go just down the hall and like knock on your neighbor's door. The one thing I would say if you do live on res that I wish I had learned in my first year is that you can get really overwhelmed by the schoolwork, uh, especially when you live on campus and you sleep on campus and you eat on campus, you never leave. So you, you're surrounded by school 24 seven. It's really important to take a break and step back, whether that's like leaving campus for, for a little bit, for an hour or so just to gain, gain some perspective and not surround yourself with school just so that you can take a little bit of a mental break because if you like live here and you sleep here and you and you study here like 24/7 it's it's a lot so you just need to make sure that you give yourself a little bit of a physical separation from from your schoolwork just to stay healthy Yeah, so I had a quite a, a bit of a different situation. Um, so I I live in the apartments close to campus here and uh, it's definitely a very immersive experience like um, yeah, a lot of my classmates that don't live on campus, like when when there's events like at seven or eight o'clock at night, like that's a that's another hour train ride, like Kira was saying. So it, it really helps. Um, sometimes being closer to campus, you can just be here in a couple minutes. Also, you don't have to wake up for your eight a.m.s at you know six. I wake up at seven fifty, book it. Like it's <laughs> it's a it's pretty good it's pretty good that way. But um, if you're if you're able to do it financially, I would recommend at least being cl as close as you can to campus, yeah. I'd just like to add, if it's not possible financially, especially because um, moving away from home does increase the cost significantly. So if that's not an option for you, just know I didn't move out in my first year and I still felt like I was part of the community here and I still felt like I got to experience the same things. And so there are ways to make it work. Um, so don't feel like if that's not a, an option for you or if you just want to save the money, you can still have a really nice experience and feel part of the community even if you don't live on campus. Um, especially um, if you wanted, I ended up moving out in my second year, so I sort of scaffolded the transition a little bit. In my first year, I wasn't learning um, all of the live on your own skills at once. I ended up doing that more in second year. So. Um, whatever is your experience or whatever is available for you, um, you can still have a really positive experience. Definitely. UFC is a commuter campus, so don't feel like you're going to miss out on anything just because you're not living here. That's not the thing. And there's, like, we all have homerooms that you can, like, and lockers, you can leave your stuff, and it's still very much a community even if you're not here 24-7, which is also probably a good thing. <laughs> okay, our probably final question uh, I'm just looking at time, yeah. Uh, this is for Raven, uh, because of your acronym. Um, uh, Raven uh, can 
Uh, male students join your Women in Science Engineering Club? Yes, absolutely. We need men to support women too. That's a huge part of it. We can't just have women supporting women. Uh, gender equality goes both ways, so we need to be supportive of each other and bring each other up, especially in an industry that's so male dominated. We need men to kind of take a lead in an initiative and be like, hey, like I see this as a problem too. It's not just a problem that you only see. I see it, and I'm going to do something about it and help you. So absolutely, you can join. We have lots of, we have male and female executives. Our presidents this upcoming year, there is a female and a male, so they're co presing together. So definitely open to anyone and everyone. Awesome. I think our time is coming. Yeah. OK, so thank you so much all of you and i wanted to thank to our uh, audience and the wonderful questions now if you do have question after this session we will continue to receive love to have your questions uh we you can send us email i'm just gonna show you the email address it's shulik diversity at ucalgary.ca and you can continue to tweet uh we will get to your question and answer uh, your questions after this as well. So thank you again, and uh, hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Thank you, panels. <laughs>